Great scenes from great plays. Tonight, starring John Payne in Dead End, the play by Sidney Kingsley, adapted for radio by Arnold Pearl. Hey, fellas, look it. Look at me. I swore and die. Ah, you fought as much. Your mud is good. Oh, hey, Angel. Hey, Tommy. What's that, Tommy? How's the water, Dippy? It's cold. Hey, look at it. Look at a new sign the Caps put up. Well, what do you know? Huh, just like the old one that was here. Dead end. Now, here's your host, the distinguished actor manager, Mr. Walter Hamden. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another transcribed half hour of great scenes from great plays. Presented on behalf of the families of the Protestant Episcopal Church of your own community and the Episcopal Actors Guild. Tonight, we dedicate our play to the great and understanding work of the Boy Scouts of America. This is Dead End. Our star, John Payne, is Gimpty, an unemployed young architect who's not yet able to move out of the slums in which he was born and raised, and who will forever carry their mark in his twisted, rickety legs. Dead end. That means this is a street that can't go any further. It ends right here, on this open wharf, hanging over a polluted river. It's all tenements on one side of the street. On the other, there's a high cement wall with an iron gate in it. The back entrance to a 20-story luxury apartment building. All this began on a summer afternoon. Five o'clock and hot. Flat, heavy heat. Ash cans spilling over with refuse and garbage. Babies, women, whole families sprawling on fire escapes, panting for air. As usual, I was sitting there on the wharf with a sketch pad on my knee, watching the kids with one eye and listening. And then I saw him. What you looking at? Nothing. See much? Hiya. You don't know me. How are you, babyface? Shut up. My name's Johnson. Keep your mouth shut. Look at me, babyface. Don't you know me? Gimpty. I'm a son of a gun, Gimpty, that used to mind my clothes right here when I went swimming. Hey, how'd you know me? I had my face changed. Plastic, they call it. I knew. You read about me, Gimpty? Yeah. Public enemy number one. $5,000 reward out for you, isn't there? You wouldn't be getting any ideas, would you? I wouldn't be telling you about them, would I? Okay, just don't get any. It ain't healthy. Say, have you really killed eight men as they say you have? Shut up. All right. Sure I killed them. What do you think? They had something I didn't have. Now I got it. Got everything I need. How about you, Gimpty? What are you doing? Me? Sitting. Mostly just sitting. Now, you went to college, didn't you? Six years, including graduate work in architecture. Six years. That's a laugh. He goes to college for six years and he's still sitting, waiting. What are you waiting for, Santa Claus? What? <laughs> you might not be so far off at that. Look, Empty, why don't you do what I've done? Take it. Go out and take what you want. Not no handouts for what you can get. I ain't done so bad, have I? I'll take your word for it. Say, is it so smart of you coming around here? Aren't the cops like What are you, a dope? Don't you read the papers? I'm way out west somewhere. Say, Gimp, see my old lady lately? Yesterday. You mean you haven't seen her yourself? That's what I come back for. 
Took it on my head, I gotta see me old lady. It's seven years. How's she look? All right. Do something for me, Gimp. Go up and get me old lady to come down here now, will you? I can't take a chance in going uh, into the house, you see. Tell her I got something to give her. Get it? Sure. She could use some money. She's gonna feel awful good seeing me. Seven years. I ain't seen her since I got out of reform school. <laughs> get me. Almost born and just overseeing me old lady. I got one of the kids to go for Babyface's mother. Kid called TB. Named for his lungs. A nickel sent him off like an express train. Babyface went over to one of the tenement stoops to wait. I took up my drawing pad again and sat there, sketching, listening... Spick it away from me, you're wet. Little angel afraid of getting wet. Boy, I'm starving. Me too, Spit. Are you, Tommy? Gee, I'm so hungry I could eat a live dog. With sauerkraut, angel? Sure, with sauerkraut, Dippy. Anybody got any dough? Oh, I ain't, Spit. Uh, me neither. How about it, angel? You didn't make no money shining shoes? Honest, Spit, I didn't get a customer all day. Then you ain't gonna mind me looking in your pants pockets here, are you? Leave me alone. Hey, get out of there, will you, Spit? Come on. Let's see. A couple of stamps. Bring Hey. I'll get a knife. Get out of there, Spit. Give me that back. Hand over the knife. Who says? What for? I says. That's what for. Give it here. Or I'll let you have it right in the bugle. Ah, yeah. Hey, some knife. Five blades. This knife is okay, Angel. You want it, Tommy? Sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Keep it, Tommy. No kidding. Hey, look at me new knife. Listen to this blade jump open. Gee. Hey, Tommy. You know that rich kid from the apartment house there? You know, the one we seen yesterday. Little Philipsy with the watch and a French dame that takes him walking? Yeah, that's him. Well, him and a mademoiselle's gone bye-bye again in about a half an hour. I heard him saying. So they're gone walking. No, they ain't. They're gone riding. Walking, riding. What's he talking about? Shut Tommy? up, Dippy. I'll slap you one. They're going riding in a big black heap, as big as a hoist. Gee, some swell car. I seen it round front. Will you, punk, stop interrupting? Uh... The point is, Tommy, the street's all tore up in front. They got a hole as big as a freight barge, right in front of the door, digging for the gas pipe. Okay, so they can't use the front door. They got to come out the back gate. They've been doing it for two days. So what's the pitch? Will you let me tell you? The guy and the dame come out. The dame's got to go all the way around the front to get to the car. Maybe to the chin mill after the chauffeur. So that leaves the guy and the watch just standing there at the gate, asking for it. Hey, maybe you got something there. It'll be like finding that watch. We can hack it for 40, maybe 50 bucks. Now look, here's how we work it. We don't even see him when they come out. You get it? Kind of scatter like we was hunting for something. Gee, I lost a nickel here last week. Shut up and listen, you meatball. So then a French dame goes after the chauffeur. Yeah, but what about the doorman? What's the matter, Angel? You yell at... Tommy! Then we roll a jerk for the watch. Tommy, Separate? I see you. Okay. What are you doing? What do you say, Tommy? Do it? It's Drina. Later, Spit. Later. Let's get in the water. Okay, meet you under the wharf. Come on, fellas. Last one into a rotten apple. First one into fat. Hey. That's what the rats say. Sitting on a cab, <laughs> Drina's 20. She's Tommy's sister. Sister, father, and mother rolled into one. She tried to catch him before he jumped in, but she never had a chance. He was too fast for her. She sat down next to me and began to talk. Gimpty, I'm worried. I'm worried sick about Tommy. The kid's all right, Trina. A year ago, even six months ago, he was. Now. Now what? So it was on the street. I can't do anything with him. Yeah. You got yourself a job looking after Tommy. When Mom died, I promised her I wouldn't let him grow up to be another babyface Martin. Babyface? Uh, what made you think of him? He used to hang out here. He used to swim right off this wharf. Yeah. Yeah, I knew him then. I used to watch his clothes when he was in the water. I'd rather see Tommy... I'd almost rather see him dead than grow up like that. <laughs> Drina left. She was too wise to think she could stay there and outweigh her brother. You know, there wasn't really anything very wrong with Tommy. Not yet. 
He was like all the others, half child, half hoodlum, enough of either one to develop into a real man or a, a baby-faced mark. He and the other kids slid out from under the wharf as soon as Drina was out of sight. I had no idea what they were up to, but I, I noticed they walked in a big circle heading for the apartment house gate. I noticed, too, that Philip Griswold, the rich boy, was standing there alone. Then Babyface got up from the stoop and walked up to Tommy. Hey, who's the big shot? The head guy. How many mobs got a head guy? Me. I'm the head guy. They're gonna roll on that kid for his watch, are you? Hey, how'd you know? I know every deal that's cooking from here to the coast. Now listen, what's the setup? We call him over, see? And make out we got a watch, too. Only better than his. We say maybe we swap with him, maybe not. But we gotta see his face to decide. See? That's all. We get the watch, we beat it. Kid stuff. Huh? Look at you. Got him like a sitting duck. You're four to one. It's coming out dark time. That means no cops around. They're all at the station house about dark time. Say, that's right, Tom. They're changing tricks. Tommy, what's going on here? You. Lay off these kids, will you? Ah, bush boy. Go peddle your papers, Skimpy. Look, mister, four to one ain't fair. Fair? You want the watch, don't you? Hey, you got a knife? Well, I'll Sure, like... he's got a knife. Well, then there's your meat. Put your knife. Show him you mean business. What are you waiting for? You ain't yellow. Tommy, don't be a fool. Ah, your father's mustache. Come on, gang. We got business with little Phillipsy. Philip Griswold ran screaming through the apartment house gate. Ten seconds later, the street was empty, except for Babyface, leaning against a building, leaning and grinning. And then I saw his mother come down the block. He didn't see her. She stopped a few feet away from him and stood with her hands on her hips. He didn't notice her until she spoke. You dog! You dog! Dirty yellow dog. Hey, Mom. Is that any way to... Don't you call me Mom. I am no mother of yours. I stick my neck out of mine to come to see you after seven years. I was sap enough to think you'd be glad to see me. What do you want with me now? Ain't you caused me enough trouble? Hey, look, Mom, Mom, take this. Take this dope. Buy yourself a dress or something. Keep your blood money, you mad dog murderer. Shut up, you. Butcher. Go back where you come from. Go back and die like the rat you are. Only leave me alone to forget I ever bore you. Why, you won't be. take that to remember me by. Murderer! 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 Fifteen minutes later... Tommy came creeping back to see if the coast was clear. That's when the Griswold boy spotted him. That's when Mr. Griswold grabbed him. Let me go, let me go. I didn't do nothing, mister. You're sure this is the one, Philip? Yes, father. He's the one who took my watch. Uh, honest, it was only kidding. I, I was bringing it back just now. Let me go so I can get it out of me pocket. Oh, no, you don't, you filthy little gutter snipe. You'll give it back, and I'll still hold you for a policeman. <laughs> Then one arm. Let one arm go. How do you expect me to get it? One arm, then. There. Now you can get the watch. Father, look out. He's got a knife. Hold me for the cops, would you? I'll show you. Oh, oh, oh. Philip, he's got away. He stabbed me. Get the police. Yes, Father. Oh, I'm bleeding. Stop him. He, he stabbed me. They put a regular dragnet out for Tommy. But he'd made a clean getaway and was hiding out. No one knew where to find him. I'd seen Babyface coach him and taunt him until he stole a watch from a perfectly harmless boy. Now he'd stabbed that boy's father. I suppose Babyface himself got fascinated by what was happening in his old neighborhood. Or maybe he just didn't have any place to go. Anyhow, he stayed around, counting on the excitement and his new face to protect him from discovery... 
And that's when I went to see Mulligan, the policeman on the beat. Oh, go away, go away, and don't bother me, Gimpy. I'm busy. Now, uh, tell me, who's the kid that stabbed old Griswold? Where is he? I don't know. I've got something else for you. I'm I've not... got to find the kid that used that knife. This Griswold's a big shot. His brother's a judge. Mulligan. Yeah? See that man standing in the doorway, second house from the corner? Oh, I told you. There's been... a $5,000 reward up for him. Mulligan. That man is Babyface Martin. Babyface Martin? You sure, Gimpy? You ain't kidding? I'm sure. And I'm not kidding. Not one second. It ended as it had to end. Squad cars with Tommy guns. Plain clothes men taking up positions on roofs, blocking off the street from entrance or exit. A voice spoke Martin's name. Martin, come on out. And a snarl came for an answer. Come and get me, cappers. And then... <laughs> Martin lay sprawled in the street. And a big crowd gathered. In the crowd were Philip Griswold and his father, wrist newly bandaged. And I noticed they seemed more interested in the crowd than in the corpse. They kept moving around, looking to the face of every kid. They had Mulligan with them. Finally, they stopped, and Philip shouted. And this one right here. I heard them call him Spit. Let me go. Let me go. I I'll tell you who done it. Well, then, who? Come on, now. What's his name? Tommy. Tommy McGrath. Where does he live? Come will on. you let me go if I take you there? Yeah, we'll let you go. We'll mush you up if this ain't on the level. First Avenue between 53rd and 4th. Come on, I'll, I'll show you. But they didn't find Tommy at home. Only Trina, and she nearly crazy with worry. A day went by, with the dragnet still out for the 14-year-old boy. And still he avoided capture. And late at night, what was left of Tommy's gang was on the wharf, roasting potatoes, or Mickeys as they call them, in an ash can fire. Come on, Dip, let's go get that wood. Angel, you stay in mind of Mickey. But Spit, I want to go. I don't want to stay here. What's the matter? You afraid of the dark? Come on, Dip, before he starts falling. Huh? You'll be there when we get back and we'll mobilize you. Oh, gee. Psst. Huh? Angel, who's that? Don't say nothing. It's me. Tommy. Tommy, where are you? Shut up. Under the wharf. Any cops around? No. Just you? Yeah. All right, I'm coming out. Uh, gee, Tommy, gee, what are you going to do with all the cops looking for you? Going to run away. But first, I got something to do. You my friend? Oh, you know me, Tom. All right. Who ratted on me? Uh, uh, I don't know. Don't you lie to me. I'll kill you. I swear and hope to die. I don't know, Tommy. I know. I spit. The rat. You think so? Yeah. But I want to find out for sure. So this is what I want you to do, Angel. Anything you say, Tommy. When Spit comes back, you say old man Griswold, the guy I stabbed, was looking for Spit. To give him five bucks for snitching on who done it. You got it straight? The guy you stabbed was here with five bucks for spit. Right. And remember, if you let on I'm here under the wharf, I'll... Oh, Tommy, ain't I your friend? Didn't I give you my knife? All right. Just like I told you, okay? What are you gonna do to him? What do you think? I'm gonna give him this. The knife? Right across his face. It's a mark of a squealer. Right. A mark of a squealer. <laughs> Hey, Spit, you missed him. That guy was here. What guy? That Griswold, the guy Tommy stabbed. He was looking for you. Me? What for? He said he had five bucks to give you. For snitching on who done it, Adam. Where is he? Where did he go? Five bucks? Did you squeal on Tommy? Sure I did. You want to make something out of it, Dippy? No. All right. Nothing. You bet nothing. Now, where'd he go, Angel? Five bucks? I want my five bucks. Tommy! 
You'll get your five bucks right now, you will oh, you dirty little... I didn't little... tell him. Get off of me. Down. Down on the ground leave where you belong, up. you rat. Leave me alone. I'll leave you. I'll leave you get something to remember me. the rest of your life. You get see this? Tommy. Tommy. They, they, they made me. The cop had me. I wouldn't have told... I, I shut up, I you squealer. Told... Shut up. Help. Help, Tommy's gonna cut me. Shut up, I said. Life. Help somebody, help! Uh, Tommy, stop it, you crazy uh, kid. Stop it. Rena! Tommy, stop that this instant. Let him off. Stay away, the both of you. Get off him, get off him, I say. Let go. Let go of my arm, Trina. Tommy, Tommy, here, here now. Let go. Of I got me. it. Give me back that knife, Kimpty. Get off him. Okay, you're right, I'll get you. Spit. Get up out of there. And get out of here. I'm gonna swear out a warrant again. Get out, I told you. You too, Angel Dippy. Remember, spit, I'll get you. Ah, bushwalk. You know where to find me, Tommy. I won't forget what you've done for me, Angel. Tommy, have you gone crazy? Listen to me. Have you he any... He snitched on me. He's a squealer. Does that mean you can cut his face, maybe kill him? What are you gonna do, Tommy? I'm getting out of here. I'd have been gone now if you hadn't have come butting in where it was none of your business. Is this why Mom died and Pa worked himself into his grave? So you could wind up like Babyface Martin? Gina, what do you want me to do? Get locked up until I'm 21 in a reform school? Tommy, we're going right now to Mr. Griswold. We'll give him back his watch and we'll explain to him. Maybe he'll let you off. Oh, what's a good? He won't listen. Maybe he will, Tommy. If Trina and you and I talk to him, anything's better than this. Come on, Tommy. What have we got to lose? <laughs> Officer, arrest this boy. That's my final word. Okay, Mr. Griswold. Come on, kid. Let's go. You see, Trina, I told you he wouldn't listen. He's not a bad boy, Mr. Griswold. Really, he's not. He stabbed me, young lady. And before that, he'd stolen my son's watch. May I say something? Who are you? Just a friend. I know these boys. I've lived in this block, in the tenements, all my life. Well, what do you want to say? A man was shot and killed in the street yesterday. The gangster, yes. What about it? I killed him. You what? I turned him in. Well, you were only doing your duty. He was a menace. I'm doing the same, turning this boy over to Officer Mulligan here. It's not the same. Babyface Martin was a, a butcher. He was a murderer. He deserved to die, but Tommy's a baby. Please, Trina. Maybe what I did was good, Mr. Griswold. Maybe it was bad. But what you're doing is condemning a child to a future even blacker than his past has been. I don't see that. What was Babyface Martin like before he became a killer? He was a leader among boys of this neighborhood, and he wasn't vicious. He had pretty decent instincts, all things considered. And so he became a gunman. No, not right away. Because of the life he had to lead in this neighborhood, in the tenements and on the streets, he got into trouble and was sent to reform school. When he came out, he was a hardened criminal. Sure, they taught him the ropes, the angles, and he was bright... He learned too well. I'm afraid I don't see You're what... condemning this boy to that same sort of a future. And what'll happen if he stays here? That, I think, is up to you and to me and all the people who tolerate slums, who let human beings, children, grow up in places not fit for cattle. Yes, that's our responsibility. And it's our responsibility to give them something to do beside playing in filth and swimming in a dirty river. A very pretty speech, young man, but aren't you living in a dream? No. You are in a nightmare. <laughs> Take the boy away, officer. There's no... You can't sense. do that. You can't. You can't. All right, kid. Let's get going. You see? You see, I told you. I told you nothing that help. It's a month later, and I'm still on the wharf. Still sketching. The kids are sitting with their feet dangling over the edge into the water. They've been talking about the future. Tommy's future and theirs. Hey, Spit, what's that song? The one Smokey used to sing at a reform school? I forget. I remember. What? If I had the wings of an angel... Oh, yeah. Over these, these prison, prison walls, walls I, I would fly. fly. Yeah, sure. And, and I'd, I'd fly, fly to, to the arms of my mother. And there i
Dead End is not a happy story. But it offers each of us a great challenge by reminding us with shocking force how strongly an adult's example molds a young life. Perhaps the bitter fact that Tommy had to be sent to a reform school will make us ask ourselves this question. What can I do to make sure there will be always a full open road, never a dead end, for my children and all children? Well, the answer is simple. We can ensure a better physical world for our children by aiding the passage of all social legislation that is designed to make better housing, better schools, and better places to play. We can support the fine youth organizations that teach our youngsters the meaning of sportsmanship, the fun and satisfaction of working and playing together. The Boy Scouts of America is an especially good example of this kind of youth organization. Most important, we can ensure a better spiritual world for our children by leading Christian lives ourselves, by attending church and making sure our children attend Sunday school. For by giving our children the example of a Christian home, we are helping them to grow up with the knowledge and inner strength that will guide them always to choose the right road through life. If you're already a member of some church, you know how much the church and organizations in the church can do to provide adults and children alike with a set of living values that provide this inner strength and happiness. If you are not already a member of some church, you certainly owe it to yourself and to your family to discover just how much a church and the friendship and guidance of an experienced clergyman may be able to help you. Of course, you're always welcome at your nearest Episcopal church, and its clergyman is ready and eager to meet and talk with you, to explain to you what the Episcopal church stands for and how it offers you and your family a faith to live by. Why not decide right now to visit your nearest Episcopal church at morning services this Sunday? Hamden. I want to thank our guests, and especially you, John Payne, for an excellent performance. Next week, friends, the families of the Protestant Episcopal Church of your own community and the Episcopal Actors Guild will present an outstanding play I'm sure you will want to hear. Henrik Ibsen's A Doll's House. And to recreate the dramatic roles of Nora and Torvald, we will be privileged to have with us two great stars. Miss Ingrid Bergman, and Mr. Brian Ahern. I hope you will join us. John Payne will soon be seen starring in the Paramount production El Paso. Music on tonight's transcribed program was composed and conducted by Nathan Crow. Now, an invitation from the church. The Episcopal Church welcomes men and women alike to share in the opportunities for service represented by the church's wide variety of activities. There is important work to do for those less fortunate than ourselves. Work that in the true spirit of the church makes better citizens of us all. So after services this Sunday,